Hey, it's Alan, and I just wanted to let you know that you can now listen to the ongoing history of new music early and ad-free on Amazon Music, included with Prime. Hey, before we start the show today, I want to tell you about something brand new we're launching with our friends at Apple Podcasts called The Ongoing History of New Music Unlimited. For $3.49 a month, $3.49, which is less than the price of your morning coffee, you can now get access to the full archive of our shows ad-free. Plus, you'll get brand new episodes two days early and special bonus episodes. It's Ongoing History Unlimited, and it's available right now only on Apple Podcasts. Is it really almost the end of 2021? If I'm honest, it's all been a blur, almost like 2020 with COVID on the mind 24-7. It's, you know, just our reality. You want to know how I've been spending my time? I've spent almost two years in my office throwing myself into work. I think I've read a record number of books. My iPad tells me that my screen time is up 23%. And I've posted somewhere around 2,500 stories on my website. Now that the end of the year is approaching and we'll soon be into the holidays, it's time for the annual office cleanup. There are post-it notes everywhere with little tidbits of information I found. I've bookmarked a ton of sites. There's a little journal filled with scribblings, books with pages turned down, and e-books with passages highlighted. Much of this has already been turned into, or will be turned into, ongoing history programs and posts. But there are also all kinds of fascinating stuff that I couldn't use. They just didn't fit in with anything that I've done in 2021. It's orphaned material. But I can't throw out any of this stuff. It's too interesting, too important to ignore. This information needs to be disseminated to the public at large. Knowledge is power, right? This material needs to be set free. So, it's once again time for the annual data dump known as 60 Mind-Blowing Things About Music in 60 Minutes. This is the Ongoing History of New Music podcast with Alan Cross. We're going to start this year's show the same way we did last year, with a song about having your mind blown. And now we can actually fold in vaccines. It doesn't matter, of course, you know I know your kind. But darling, I will blow your mind. I know your kind. But darling, I will blow your mind. I know your That's a band called The Vaccines and a song called Blow Your Mind. See what we did there? I'm Alan Cross, and this is the annual clearing of the office, where I use up all the bits of music information and trivia that didn't fit into any ongoing history project from the past year. It's 60 mind-blowing facts about music in 60 minutes. Most of this stuff is pretty random and weird, so you don't know what you're going to end up with or what's going to come up next. So here it comes. Make of it what you will. And we're going to start with some COVID-related material. Number one. Gyms in South Korea were so alarmed by a COVID outbreak that they banned fast music. They wouldn't allow anything more than 120 beats per minute. The thinking was fast music encouraged heavy workouts, which meant a lot of heavy breathing, which could spread COVID. Same thing with splashing sweat all over the place, which leads to point number two. Scottish bars banned music and TVs. This was in 2020. The volume had to be kept low on all music and all televisions, so people wouldn't have to shout over the noise. That, they said, would help control the spread of COVID. Number three, very, very early in the Rolling Stones career, this would be 1963 or 1964, they were paid to write a jingle for Rice Krispies. Brian Jones wrote the music and Mick Jagger sang this. Wake up in the morning, there's a snap around the place. Wake up in the morning, there's a crackle in your face. Wake up in the morning, there's a pop that really says, Rice Krispies to you, and you, and you. For on the milk and listen to the stand that says it's nice. For on the milk and listen to the crackle of that rice. Get up in the morning to the pop that says it's rice. Hear them talking crisp, Rice Krispies. Point number four. The Beatles and James Bond debuted on the same day. On October 5th, 1962, the first Beatles single, Love Me Do, was released. And that same day, Dr. No, the first James Bond film, opened in theaters. Five, you know the song the ice cream truck plays? That song is controlled by one family from Minnesota. Back in 1973, Bob Nichols began supplying music boxes preloaded with jingles, specifically for ice cream trucks. And today, 
97% of those ice cream truck music boxes are controlled by the Nichols Corporation. Number six, everybody remembers the classic TV show WKRP in Cincinnati, right? What almost no one knows is that the character of Johnny Fever, the weirdo DJ, was inspired by a Canadian-born DJ named Skinny Bobby Harper. He moved from Saskatchewan to the U.S. and at one point in the mid-1960s worked at an Atlanta radio station called WXQI, where his behavior landed him in all kinds of trouble. Bill Dial, a writer who would later end up writing for WKRP, worked at the same station, and he used Canadian Skinny Bobby Harper as the template for Johnny Fever. And number seven, still with television, movie director and horror metal guy Rob Zombie was once a production assistant on Pee-wee's Playhouse in the mid-1980s. Former Pee-wee's Playhouse production assistant Rob Zombie, who, by the way, also worked for the company that made commercials for Twizzlers. Again, I'm telling you, this is really random stuff. Let's pick up our 60 mind-blowing things about music in 60 minutes with item number eight. Taylor Swift is the unofficial mascot of a Brazilian soccer team. The team is called the Corinthians, which is based in Sao Paulo. And this whole thing derives from what's called the Taylor Swift rule. Going back to 2006, the team has never lost a game when Tay-Tay releases an album. At the same time, the team always loses immediately after Paul McCartney releases a record. I don't know who keeps track of these things, but there you go. Remember the old song, Ain't No Sunshine by Bill Withers? He wrote that song while making toilets for Boeing jetliners. Spencer Davis, the guy behind the Spencer Davis group, played the lottery every week with three sets of numbers. One set for him, another set for his wife, and one set for his dog. In 2012, the dog hit a jackpot of $250,000. Number 11, when Bruce Willis married Demi Moore in November 1987, the officiating pastor was Little Richard. He was an ordained minister, so it was illegal. Number 12, here's an oddity about Michael Jackson. When he performed live, his writer insisted that he be provided a spread of KFC. Every single show had to have KFC backstage for Michael Jackson. Number 13, back to the 60s. Think about the Beatles song, I Am the Walrus. In it, John Lennon goes on about being the Eggman. Now, that's weird. So where did that come from? Eric Burden, the leader of the animals, had a Jamaican girlfriend named Sylvia. She had a particular oral sex trick that involved raw eggs, which Eric really, really enjoyed. And when he told everybody about it, he was immediately nicknamed the Eggman. That ended up in a Beatles song. Again, I do not make this stuff up. Number 14, Slipknot has been known to perform the dance hit Funky Town during sound checks. And number 15, John Dolomayan is the drummer for System of a Down. He's also the owner of one of the best comic book stores in America. It's called Torpedo Comics. It's headquartered in a 3,500-square-foot space in Las Vegas. It's been in operation for 2003. And if you want a rare comic book, you go to John. He'll fix you up. Here are more of our 60 mind-blowing things about music in 60 minutes. We are up to item number 16. There is now emo wrestling. This is a feature of Game Changer Wrestling, a league based out of New York City. These emo nights feature DJs playing appropriate music with everyone wearing dark clothes. Number 17. When Kanye West held an album listening party at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta back in the summer, somebody grabbed a Ziploc bag and captured some of the air in the stadium that night. This guy then sold that bag of air on eBay for $7,600. Number 18. On a similar note, there's a hardcore Elvis collector from Athens, Georgia, named Joni Mabe. She has the remains of a wart Elvis had removed in 1957 before he went into the army. This wart is sitting in a tube of formaldehyde, and she says she's been offered $1 million for it. Twice. 
Oh, and she's also the proud owner of an Elvis toenail clipping. Number 19, Kurt Cobain's childhood home in Aberdeen, Washington, has been declared a historical landmark by the state's Department of Archaeology and Historic Preservation. It's going to become an official tourist attraction. And number 20, let's talk about astronomy. If a star is of a sufficient size, it collapses and explodes at the end of its life in a brilliant supernova. When that happens, there's an initial burst of light caused by a shock wave that goes through the star. The effect is similar to a bottle of champagne bursting open. And that's why some astronomers are referring to this stage of a star's death as a champagne supernova. Back with more of our list of 60 mind-blowing things about music in 60 minutes in just a sec. This is the annual end-of-year data dump I call 60 Mind-Blowing Things About Music in 60 Minutes. I'm clearing out all the information I've uncovered over the past 12 months, but it was never able to use for any kind of ongoing history purpose. So now we continue with item number 21. This was a very, very hot year. In fact, it was so hot that vinyl records were getting warped in transit from warehouses to record stores and even in the mail. Number 22 Speaking of record stores, you can now buy a record store-scented candle. It's from a company called D.W. Campbell's. You might wonder what this smells like. Uh, Pressed vinyl, warm woods, accented by notes of sweet blossoms, hints of amber, and soft fruit. Doesn't sound like any record store I know, but uh, whatever. Number 23. If you're a fan of Star Trek, you'll know that we want tractor beams. There is now such a thing. Scientists have figured out how to make tweezers of sound that can move objects without actually touching them. We've still got a long way to go because all they can do is move objects the size of a millimeter, but still, we're we're on our way to a tractor beam. Number 24, time for some crime. A Swedish rapper named Yazin was arrested and jailed over a plot to kidnap a rival rapper. The kidnapping failed, but the guy was beaten and robbed. Ten months in jail for this. Number 25, still with kidnapping, Meredith Doughty is a musician from Wichita, Kansas, who performs under the name Cathead. He was so upset about mask mandates in the city that he allegedly planned to kidnap and slash the throat of the mayor who declared that mandate. Fortunately, the FBI got to him first. Moving on, number 26, DJ Steve Aoki got together with luxury jewelry maker Bulgari to create a watch just for clubbing. Glows in the dark, making the need for glow sticks unnecessary. Just $5,200. And number 27, coming up in 2022, Liverpool will host the first ever David Bowie World Convention. Three days of all things Bowie, marking the 50th anniversary of the Ziggy Stardust album. Book your tickets now for June 17th to the 19th of 2022. Let's continue with our 60 random facts that I uncovered over the last 12 months. This is item number 28. Cardi B has been on a run with some hit singles. One of the things she did was buy her daughter a diamond necklace worth $200,000 for her birthday. And by the way, her daughter turned three this year. Number 29. The widow of a musician who performed with the BBC Symphony Orchestra launched a lawsuit against the network saying that he died of cancer caused by having to perform in a studio that was riddled with asbestos. He was a horn player, so he was always taking deep breaths, and she says this is why he ended up with mesothelioma. Number 30, one of the most collectible gadgets these days are original iPods. If you have a first-gen iPod from 2001, and it's still in the box and still in great condition, it is worth a lot. One company acquired one such iPod and sold ownership shares in it for five bucks a pop. And they offered 5,000 of those shares. Number 31, one of the most successful albums of all time is the greatest hits record from ABBA called ABBA Gold. As of July, 2021, it has been on the British charts for 1,000 weeks, which is more than 19 years. 
And number 32. In 2001, the Welsh band Super Furry Animals asked Paul McCartney to appear on one of their albums. He said, sure. So they waited for some tapes from Paul. When they arrived, it was a recording of Paul munching on some celery. Okay, he's, he's a beetle. So they used it on their Rings Around the World album for a song called Receptacle for the Respectable. And for a 20th anniversary of that record, they made the isolated track available. And uh, here it is. I said he's he's a beetle and perhaps the greatest songwriter ever so uh yeah number 33 chinese pop fans caused a food shortage this year there's a netflix like network in china which launched a program designed to create a new boy band sponsoring the show was a dairy company the hook was that fans could get extra voting power for their favorite contestants by scanning the qr codes found on the caps of a particular brand of bottled milk Fans created an online drive to buy millions of dollars worth of this drink just for the bottle caps. Once they had the QR code, the drink was poured down the drain. This outraged authorities so much that they brought in new laws against food waste and the boy band show was canceled. Number 34. Still in China, there was a serious diplomatic incident when the Canadian embassy in Beijing created a t-shirt for those who went to Wuhan in the early days of the pandemic. It was the Wu-Tang Clan logo with the words Wuhan superimposed. The online world in China went ballistic, saying that this was an attack on Wuhan and China because they thought the W of the official Wu-Tang logo looked like a bat. And bats are apparently where COVID came from. And speaking of merch, this is number 35. Weezer is very good at coming up with interesting ideas. In 2021, the band teamed up with Roomba, the robot vacuum cleaner people. And they made a limited edition run of Weezer Roombas. We are now up to item number 38 in our list of mind-blowing things about music. This is the 2021 edition. Number 36. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled that a lifetime ban on owning guns given to a man had to stay in place. Why? Because back in the 1980s, this dude sold counterfeit cassette tapes. That kind of bootlegging means he could never own a gun again. Number 37. Despite the pandemic, the annual Heavy Metal Knitting Championship took place in Finland again this year. This requires entrants to actually knit something while performing interpretively against a backdrop of metal music. This year's winner was The Knitting Witch, and he came from the Netherlands. Number 38. While Harvey Weinstein still faces a reckoning over years of sexual misconduct and abuse, somebody is already running Harvey Weinstein the musical. It's coming out of Northern Ireland. Number 39. You gotta hand it to French President Emmanuel Macron. He entered into a bet with a couple of French comedians that they could not get 10 million views of their video on social distancing, hand-washing, and masks. If they did, he'd have to sit through a concert by a band of their choice. Macron lost and was therefore treated to a set by a grindcore band called Ultra Vomit. And number 40, another metal story. Science has been studying metal and metal fans for years. One of the things a 2021 experiment uncovered was that metal fans are among the happiest music fans out there. They're second only to jazz fans. Oh, and metal fans? They're the ones most likely to have sex in a car. This brings us to the two-thirds mark of our look at 60 mind-blowing facts about music from 2021. And the last 20 items are coming up. This is the home stretch of this year's show featuring 60 mind-blowing facts about music in 60 minutes. Again, this is stuff I learned throughout the year, but haven't had a chance to use it until now. So rather than let all this research and reading go to waste, I present it to you and you can sort it out. Number 41, back to COVID for a second. 
You've heard the conspiracy that the vaccine will somehow connect us all to some sort of nefarious 5G network that will, uh, I don't know what it'll do, but it won't be good. Someone posted a schematic diagram purporting to be that 5G chip that was being injected into everyone. This was a hoax. The schematic was actually part of a boss guitar pedal that just happened to have an internal circuit labeled 5G. Number 42. Ollie London is a super fan of BTS, the K-pop band. He has spent $200,000 so far on plastic surgery to look more like his idols. And although he's, he's English, born and raised, he says he now identifies as Korean. Okay. Number 43. Bonnie Brent was a Toronto drummer who died this past year at the age of 73. For his funeral, his family worked with the funeral home to pose Bonnie, his body, behind his drums for his funeral. No casket, just dead and embalmed Bonnie perched behind his drums for everybody to see. Number 44, podcasts are mostly a digital thing, but a Kickstarter campaign appeared this year that offered podcasts, all based out of Chicago, on vinyl. Number 45, Judas Priest singer Rob Halford, who is about as English as they come, has been recognized as a colonel in Kentucky, and that's for his work in the world of metal. 46. More COVID. One of the problems with restarting festivals in the UK this past summer was an acute shortage of porta potties. There just weren't enough to go around to fulfill the biological needs of festival goers. And number 47, this is kind of related. A UK survey wanted to know what songs are the most popular to listen to while sitting on the toilet. They accomplished this by looking at keywords such as bathroom, toilet, and pooping when it came to playlists. The number one song was Sweater Weather by The Neighborhood. And I honestly don't know what that means. Okay, we're almost done. Let's push on. Number 48. There was a reissue of George Harrison's All Things Must Pass album, which came out at the end of 1970. The original cover features George posing with some garden gnomes. New promotional gnomes were made available for the new version. Number 49, random stat. By 2024, there will be a smartphone for every single person on earth. Number 50, everybody knows Love Shack, the song from the B-52s. Singer Kate Pearson put the real Love Shack up for sale this year. This is a hotel that she was running in the Catskills. 4,800 square feet, 13 bedrooms, 11 baths, all on 6.5 acres. Number 51, into board games. There's now one called Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll. You first. Number 52, John Hinckley, the man who tried to assassinate Ronald Reagan in 1981, and these days he's passing his time by posting original music on YouTube. Number 53, as we're talking about presidents, Moby believes he has the inside story about Donald Trump's relationship with Russia. He claims to have an inside source at the CIA. Number 54, back to merch for a second. Glass Animals, the British band, has their own brand of peanut butter. Number 55, and who knew that Prince Charles was a fan of two-tone ska? He even paid a visit to a ska museum in Coventry this year. Can you imagine him skanking in a pork pie hat? Five more random facts, and we're done. Under construction on an island in Norway is something called the Global Music Vault. This will be a place where digital music will be stored and protected, it's hoped, for a thousand years. Not even a nuclear strike will be able to scramble the data. Plenty of artists are already on board, including the Beatles organization. Number 57. Still with high-tech stuff, Coldplay has announced that they want to be the first band to perform on the moon. Okay, good luck with that. 58. ZZ Top once stole Ministry's drums. Not physical drums, but samples taken from Ministry records. If you listen to some ZZ Top records from the late 1980s, those drum sounds from Frank Beard are actually triggered Ministry samples. Number 59. Fatboy Slim was once so broke that he thought about giving up being a DJ to become a fireman. And finally, number 60. A report came out this year that estimated that Amy Winehouse 
spent 500,000 pounds on drugs before she died at the age of 27. That brings us to the end of this year's edition of 60 Mind-Blowing Things About Music in 60 Minutes. I've already started creating a list for 2022. And if you missed any of the other programs like this, I started doing these shows back in 2017. You can go back to listen to any of them as podcasts. They're all available in the usual places. Find me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. There's my website, a journal of musical things.com. It comes with a free daily newsletter, so you never lose track of what's going on. And please feel free to drop me a line through email, alan at alancross.ca. Technical Productions by Rob Johnston. I'm Alan Cross. You've been listening to the Ongoing History of New Music podcast with Alan Cross. Subscribe to the podcast through iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, and everywhere you find your favorite podcasts. 